LSU the three seed, Utah the two seed. The winner gets Miami on Sunday. These two, two games, really contrasting styles. Methodical motion against athleticism and quickness. LSU controls it first. This is Flaje Johnson, the SEC freshman of the year. And Angel Reese with the offensive rebound. How can Utah keep Angel Reese off the glass? I'm interested to see the answer to that riddle. Alexis Morris tries the three. And Morris is going to be fouled on the three-point attempt by Izzy Palmer. Now that Kim Mulkey has asked Alexis Morris to get off to a good start. You know, she has an alter ego. She calls her Luther. Lex she Luther. Said, Lex Luther needed to show up early. We'll see how she gets started in this game. Scale of one to 10, this jacket for Kim Mulkey. She borrowed it from me. <laughs> <laughs> I think Monica McNutt is right. Is it part flamingo? It's a sweet 16. You got to step your game up. I leave them something to remember you by. Let's take a look at today's starting lineups. It's brought to you by Capital One. Obviously, Alyssa Peely, so important. But I know you love what her and Jenna Johnson can do together. We've got a high-low option. You've got Peely who can go to work down low. Jenna Johnson can knock down the three. And then they're interchangeable. It's going to be a foul against Kateri Poole, and it puts Alyssa Peely at the free throw line. The transfer from USC has completely overhauled her game, took a huge focus off the court with nutrition in the weight room, and she is the Pac-12 player of the year. In our meeting yesterday, I measured my hands with Alyssa Peely. You watch the dribble from the free throw line. Once she, the ball comes up, she palms it with one hand before she gets in the shooting motion. Her hands are big and strong. Starting five for LSU, Alexis Morris. She is that veteran presence on the floor, their point guard. She's the only returning starter from last year's LSU team. First two points for Angel Reese. I don't know if Utah can guard Angel Reese one-on-one -on -one in the paint. They may have to bring the double. Utah gets it back and it slips through the fingers of Peely. And Angel Reese, they're going to give it to her to take down the floor. This stays with LSU. Well, for Kim Mulkey, this is her 16th. Sweet 16 appearance. Entering the tournament, she had been here 15 times, and the three other coaches in Greenville Regional 2 had not been here. I think it's a blessing and a curse. When you've been there as many times as Kim Mulkey, you know what to exist, so you carry a lot of pressure. For those coaches that haven't been here before, sometimes ignorance is bliss as far as not knowing what it's like, and you just continue to coach it like it's any other game. Johnson gets the touch inside, going against Angel Reese. Kajiri Poole sprinting down the floor for the layup. Kajiri Poole in the starting lineup, getting an offensive boost for LSU. Now she's a reason why Angel Reese is at LSU. Reese wasn't looking at the Tigers until Kajiri Poole said, hey, maybe you should give Kim Mulkey another chance. Reese swats that down, and there she goes. The way that she can handle the ball, remember when she came out of high school? She was the number one wing in the country. Kateri Poole for three. 7-0 run for the LSU Tigers. The other benefit, Kim Mulkey having been in 15, sweet 16s. If there's anybody to compare a team for what to expect when you get there, it's a coach with that much experience. Nice take for Palmer. An LSU team that lost 80% of its scoring from last season. They had to totally revamp. 
We've gotten here to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2014. What is guaranteed from a Kim Mulkey basketball team is defense. That will lead to offense. You know that Kim Mulkey coach teams are going to defend you. They're going to bring man-to-man -man tight pressure, and they're going to crash the glass night in and night out. Jose Johnson at the free throw line. That foul was on Peely. the pressure of LSU, you've got to be composed. You cannot allow them to speed you up. And that was great execution offensively. Jenna Johnson waiting on the screen, then finds herself wide open. Look, Lynn Roberts told us Jenna Johnson is that under the radar player. We've got to have her have a good game today to advance. Well, she is the unsung hero, but she's going to be that post player that's going to run the floor every possession. She's going to get on the glass at key times and then come out like she did the last possession and hit those big buckets. Yeah, she never gets tired. Looking for three. It was a good look. It goes over the backboard. Well, you watch the screen that is set by Kennedy McQueen. And that just gives Jenna Johnson enough time. You just need a second to make a layup. Talk about her never getting tired. She was doing a full workout before this game. Yeah, I was getting tired watching her <laughs> in warm-ups. <laughs> but she is the team mom. And she's just a sophomore. Morris, baseline. She's got four. Neepkins going in, trying to shake off the defense. Angel Reese grabs the rebound. Several times today, Reese is just taking it all the way down the court, and she overthrows Poole. And Lynn Roberts in her eighth season. She is a finalist for the National Coach of the Year. This two seed, the highest in program history, their first Sweet 16 since 2006, and just their third appearance all time. Lynn Roberts has been building this team to be in this situation really since the COVID year. She said after that year, she did it, uh, dug into analytics. She loves numbers and looked at, okay, figuring out what it was that she needed. She looked at NBA teams, European leagues, and what other teams in the Pac-12 did that were successful, and then figured out what pieces she needed to put together. She said the number one thing, shot selection. Yeah, shot selection, you got to take care of the basketball. Rebound. You got to give things that give you chances. The inbound to Peely, it's going to stay with Utah. I think getting a player like Alyssa Peely was huge for Utah. When Peely came in, she committed to her fitness. She dropped about 30 pounds. She still continues that routine, changed her, her nutritional plan, and has really been an anchor inside for the youth. She's coming off a double-double in the second round. 28 points, 10 rebounds. Fuzzy Johnson going fast for LSU. Poole in the corner. No offensive rebound, Ladasia Williams. Alexis Morris, top of the key, the three won't go. LSU starting one for four from behind the arc. Neepkins, got it. And LSU is going to call time out. We are in full force in the Sweet 16. It rolls on tonight. A couple more games. We will get to see Caitlin Clark, one of the finalists for National Player of the Year, and Iowa take on Colorado, and then Louisville and Ole Miss. The teams that are advancing have really been based on defense. That's how Colorado was able to get there over Iowa. South Carolina, they bring some defense. See them play tomorrow. Aaliyah Boston, Isaiah Cook having a tremendous season. And Boston, one of those finalists, too, for the National Player of the Year again. Neepkins. 
layup right around Alexis Morris. Utah has settled in to LSU's pace. They picked up their defense. Well, they forced Kim Mulkey to call that timeout. And she was furious and after LSU turned the ball over and Neepkins took it the other direction. Five seconds. Morris for two. Rebound by Alyssa Peely. One of the things Lynn Roberts said was, she looked and said, you know, really, LSU not known for that perimeter shooting team, so she was going to kind of just guard inside the three-point line. They get it inside to Jim Johnson, who is triple teamed and fouled, and she'll go to the free throw line. LSU up by a couple here in the first quarter. This Utah team got a big transfer in the offseason from Alyssa Peely. Her teammates told us they knew when she came on campus to visit they had needed to have her on their roster. And let's take a look at tonight's difference makers. It's brought to you by CarMax. Alyssa Peely is a difference maker. Look, her first sport, Carolyn, was football in the third grade. She played for her dad. And she also played basketball, track and field. She was also a wrestler. And volleyball. <laughs> she does like played all kinds of sports. And I think her versatility has really attributed to the well-rounded player, basketball player that she is today. Yeah, 13 state titles to her resume. And look at the first two rounds, her numbers, averaging over 30 points per game, over nine rebounds a contest. As I've watched Alyssa Peely play this season, just amazed at the things that she'll do. She's not just a post player with her back to the basket. She can knock down the three. I've even watched her running like a dribble handoff and fake the handoff, then cross over behind her back, then bring it back and really handle the basketball like a yo-yo. And what's so cool about it, especially these days, you guys, you, know, you have so many kids growing up playing just one specialized sport, and Alyssa Peely is that athlete to kind of show you, hey, you can get involved in a lot of different activities. And then CP, I mean, you got to see some of those elements of those other sports in her game. Well, she's got great eye-hand coordination. So when you think about her playing softball or playing volleyball and then football, she just got the toughness. She has no fear. Yeah, she was a lineman right alongside her brother starting in the third grade. <laughs> uh, just for the record, though, she did not like wrestling. No, her, she her did not. Her dad made her do it, is what she said. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's one of eight kids. So I'm sure there are a lot of sporting events that happen that are just involved uh, family members. Well, she is the second oldest. Eight seconds here. And she stepped out of bounds. Well, LSU, or Utah has gotten more comfortable. Meanwhile, LSU over the last six from the field. They haven't scored in three and a half minutes. LSU likes to create their offense from their defense. They want this to be a fast-paced game. If Utah can control the pace of the game and make LSU have to execute against them in the half court, they can make this really interesting. Jasmine Carson misses the two from the elbow. She's known as a three-point shooter for this LSU team. The eight of setting it up for Utah. Peely just lets the three go. Terry Poole checking back in for Jasmine Carson. Now with Utah really focused on trying to take away Angel Reese inside, Kim Mulkey's going to have to move her around. Bring her up to the high post. Pass is tipped by Peely. They were trying to get into Ladasia Williams, and that eventually forces the turnover. We were talking to Kim Mulkey, and she said, you know, different than what Utah has seen all season, really, is they have two posts with LaDasia Williams and Angel Reeves. But right now, Utah's just sitting in the paint, really making it difficult for the Tigers to get the ball inside. Peely 
gets it, and she's going back to the free throw line. That's a foul on Ladeja Williams. Well, Ladeja Williams cannot allow Alyssa, Pe Alyssa Peely to get two feet in the paint because when you let her get position that deep in the lane, that requires help to come. And when you need help to come over, then you're just making yourself vulnerable to get into some foul trouble. You know, we asked Kim Mulkey about Alyssa Peely, and she said what stood out was she's got great footwork, and she's really good at positioning herself. She's a bit undersized for being inside. She's really good at positioning herself against those taller post players. A lot of times that's the advantage that an undersized post player has is she knows she's at a disadvantage, so she works that much harder to do her work early. Daisha Young whistled for the blocking foul, her first. Four and a half minute scoring drought for the Tigers. And this is the pace really that favors Utah. Fawzi Johnson in the corner, coughs it up. Vieta. And Peely traveled. She traveled, but you see that first step, like she was ready to put it on the deck and go by you. Melissa Peely, a second team All-American, the Pac-12 player of the year, the first at Utah. She's going to take a seat here. Three points, two rebounds, and an assist for Peely. Angel Reese calling for it. Trying to work her way around Jenna Johnson down low. But Utah sagging the end. But Angel Reese finds a way. Five minute scoring drought ends for okay. LSU thanks to Ladesia Williams. Kennedy McQueen. Swish! She's got a big cheering section. And they're all sitting right behind the bench. They're, they're either their shirts or they're wearing lights around their neck. She told us she was going to have at least 20 people here. Last year, Poa almost threw it away. Angel Reese gets it, and we'll see Reese at the free throw line. And fouls on Kennedy McQueen, her first. You know, LSU looks a little bit like having the frustration they did in the SEC tournament when Tennessee made their run, and it's early. Well, the last time LSU was in this building, they lost to LSU. The SEC tournament was played here in Bon Secor Wellness Arena. Angel Reese told us that loss has really fueled them in this tournament so far. Two point nine on the clock. Vieta from half court. Utah with a ten to three run to end this quarter. We are knotted up at sixteen. When we come back, Brooke catches up with Kim Mulkey. Coach, how do you make Utah a little less comfortable here on offense? Well, I think they're doing a good job defending the post. We haven't had many post touches. We've jacked up some shots. We hadn't hit some shots. Uh, we, we just got to calm down and just work your way through it, set screens, execute. Uh, defensively, we started out better, uh, but now I don't know what it is. I'm rotating a lot of people in and out. Appreciate you, Coach. You're welcome. Tied up at 16 after 10 minutes. So how did you see Utah catch back up? Because LSU had a 7-0 run there to start the game. Well, uh, Utah settled in. And then they were able to execute offensively. You know, they ran that play for Jenna Johnson, getting a screen for her to come across. 
Utah also turned up their defense, getting stops and then running off misses or running off of uh, turnovers and coming down. That can kind of give Utah some confidence as well. And they were just very patient, putting back-to-back -back stops and then coming and converting on the other end. You can see both of these teams, tops in the country in paint points. They're also two of the top five scoring teams in the nation. Oh, McQueen got the bank. Kennedy McQueen. And we asked Lynn Roberts, how do you fight that pressure? And she said, you got to move the ball, you got to move your bodies, and you got to create for each other. That's an offensive foul on Angel Reese. Her first. Yeah, the defensive rotation has been there. And Jenna Johnson is doing a nice job defending Angel Reese right now, just moving her feet. Yeah, Angel Reese only three points and three rebounds. She averages 23 points and 15 rebounds a game. Vieta weaving her way around. This is Young going baseline. The problem with Angel Reese bringing it in transition, she's not, a, she's not available to be the option on the pass. It's slowing down LSU's breaks. Fouls on Kelsey Reese. But LSU, when they get a rebound instead of an outlet and letting Angel run the floor, she's the one bringing the ball down the court. Ten seconds, Poole waiting on the screen. Reese kept it together and found her way to two more points. Reese and Peely find ways to finish around the basket that you go, how'd that happen? Young for the triple, no. And Alexis Morris, all gas. Her shot stopped by Young. And that's two fouls on Angel Reese. Laura Smith's gonna have to come in. So Reese immediately goes to the bench. She knows that Samaya Smith checks into the game. She does have already one foul in this game. And she's a freshman for LSU. She's given them some good minutes this it's, year. Yeah, and Smith has been tremendous on the glass and finishing in the paint. Johnson taking it at Smith immediately. Smith so fun, er, Johnson so fundamental, smart in understanding. Gather, two feet, go off two feet once you get in the paint. Turnover, McQueen got it. Snatched it right out of the air. Vieta dumps it off to Peely. No whistle, but Samaya Smith is fouled by Vieta. Jenna Johnson is so fundamental. Just pull through, then get two feet in the paint, shot fake, gather, go up strong, and get the finish. She was a member of the Pac-12 All-Freshman team last year, now All-Pac-12 honorable mention. Averages 12 points a game, but in the tournament, these first two games, she's averaged 17 and a half. She is just very organized. Yes, she is. You know, and she, <laughs> she even has her roommates on a calendar to make sure they get in the right place at the right time. But there's anybody that knows what the game plan is, it's going to be Jenna Johnson. She told us, I'm making sure everybody gets to practice on time, probably early. But Asia Williams turnaround won't drop in. She tells us, she said, I don't like disorganization. So I think she's making sure her team, even through the chaos of playing against LSU's defense, they've got to be organized. LSU with the takeaway. Jasmine Carson. 
This is a two. You see Lynn Roberts tell her team, stay calm. You can't get excited, not this early. Peely up and in against Asia Williams. We may have a little talking going on underneath the basket. Right into the paint, Alexis Morris, rebound by Peely. Ooh. And Kateri Poole whistled for her second foul. To watch Peely is patient, waits on the screen, then gets that positioning. She didn't go all the way out of the lane, outside the paint. She just stops so that she has the advantage once she catches it to go right up into the easy two. Five points, four rebounds for Alyssa Peely. And Sidberry coming in, brings size onto the floor for Utah. And Gianna Neepkins just took everything she wanted. See, LSU's a different team without Angel Reese on the floor. Reese picked up two fouls around the eight minute mark here in the second quarter. Second foul on Peely. So Peyton McFarland comes to check in and Alyssa Peely is gonna take a seat. So both of the post players we touched on to start this game sitting now with two fouls each. Peely is a major factor offensively for Utah, but I think it's even a bigger impact for LSU not having Angel Reese. Why? Utah has scoring options in Neepkins on the perimeter. Also, Palmer is a threat. Sid Barry can get it done inside. LaDaisha Williams proving she can get it done too. She gave a little too small signal after that. That's the second on LaDasia Williams. Now after LaDasia has just been able to be productive inside, she said, you're not big enough to guard me down there, but came down the other end and committed the foul. So that puts LSU in a tough situation with Angel Reese and now LaDasia Williams, both with two fouls. <laughs> Palmer misses the first. The NCAA Women's Championship continues today with a Sweet 16. It runs through Sunday, April 2nd, when we crown a champion every game on the ESPN family of networks. For more information, go to NCAA.com. Your home for all 90 NCAA championships. It's going to be important for LSU for Flaje Johnson, the freshman. She's got to get going. That would help, too, if Alexis Morris can find her shot. Six points now for Morris. She averages 15 a game, but only had 11 in their second round win over Michigan. Sidberry, there's a foul underneath, an offensive foul on Peyton McFarland. The Utah Utes, they have the lead, but it's going to be on the back of Alexis Morris to get LSU Tigers in there. The little crossover up for two. The Tigers need more of that. Well, the key that Lynn Roberts said, take good shots. And she, they practice that. If you take a bad shot, she has an air horn. And if you take a bad shot, she blows the horn. But guess what? If you get, if you take a good shot. Oh, cowbell. More cowbell. Cow, baby. <laughs> What's going on in the Utah huddle right now? Well, they're talking about, like you said, shot selection, and in certain areas, they want to slow down. So in their offense, they really want to execute, read the plays, slow down at the free throw line. She said, listen, we're four of eight. But then she said, hey, let's win these last four minutes. Let's win this second quarter. 
Everybody started to get up from the from the bench, and she said, "Wait, it's a long time out." Good thing we all like each other. Yeah. <laughs> Brooke, you know, remember yesterday she talked to us about the mindset coming in. LSU has to beat and defend us. I, I thought I really liked that take, and I've heard her use that a couple of times this season for this Utah team. Yeah, I just like I like the confidence. You know, it's easy to come in and look at a team like LSU that's so fast, so physical, so good. And just talk about what you know you need to do to stop them. And I just love her confidence. Hey, they got to stop us too. Well, and she talked about referring to games that the teams they have played that are similar to LSU, like playing Ole Miss earlier in the season. They also played against UCLA. They played Arizona, and so she could compare those two in preparation for what they were going to see against LSU. Right now, LSU on a 7-0 run to tie this back up. Healy has the two fouls. Yeah, Healy with two, Angel Reese with two. This is three seconds now for Palmer. And Kim Mulkey wanted to travel. Palmer is so composed with the basketball. She doesn't get rattled, number one in white. Spent one season at Texas before becoming a Utah Ute. Ladeja Williams going to work. Keep in mind, she's out there with two fouls as well, but LSU doesn't have a ton of depth at the post. Kim Mulkey showing a lot of confidence, and they should, should have that in Ladeja Williams with all of the experience that she has. Sidbury misses. Samaya Smith sneaking down the court. And it's a blocking foul. First foul on Lonnie White. Fifth year, Ladeja Williams with the up and under, the footwork, the composure, the post patience paid off for number zero in purple. Kim Mulkey told us yesterday when Ladeja wanted to come to LSU transferring in from Missouri, you've got to change your mindset. You have to give 100% on every play, every practice. That's what I'm going to ask for you. Are you up for the challenge? And Ladeja said yes. Well, Kim pointed out when through her career, Ladeja's career at Missouri, she was injured a yeah. lot of time. And Kim challenged her and said, if you're not going to be able to stay on the court for us, this might not be the place for you. And Ladeja went to work, got herself in good condition. And Kim Mulkey said she has not asked to come out or sit out of a practice, but she's been there to go to work. And we got to see her have that career high 15 rebounds against Arkansas during the regular season. Ooh, young corrals it just in time. Johnson stepping out, it's off to the left. Faje Johnson out with it, up to Morris. LaDaysia Williams, buckets. Nine points now. LSU got it back. And now Utah. Hipkins the drive, the kick. McQueen bounces out another chance for Utah. Can't give him that many chances. Neepkins at the top of the key. Offensive rebounds. It's dangerous when you give those up to Utah because you're scrambling defensively and you got to find the three-point shooters quick. Utah's three-point shot is back. They've hit four of them today. They went one for 15 in the second round against Princeton. Led the Pac-12 in threes per game. Yeah, Princeton had them, had had Utah a little off kilter, not able to get set with their shots. Flaget misses. Young. They're feeling it now. Moving the ball, passing on a good shot to get a great shot. The players, each Utah player got the confidence ready to pull the trigger. Five threes for Utah now. 
They average eight a game. Morris' shot rolls out. Utah on a 6-0 run. Well, Utah right now using a lineup with really one post player, and I'm talking Jenna Johnson. And Utah didn't get it across half court in time. We saw that in the Miami game. Yeah. Like as teams are trying to slow down the pace of the game, your guards got to understand, get across half court and then slow down. LSU brings in Carson, a three-point shooter. A couple seconds difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Again, Angel Reese, Alyssa Peely, they're both on their respective benches with two fouls each. It's going to be isolation for Alexis Morris. Utah ball, 3.3. They'll inbound to Neepkins. Off the front of the iron. At the half, Utah up on LSU, 33-29. to It has been Utah who has controlled the pace of this game, the tempo. They have been very intentional with their offensive execution. Alyssa Peely is with Brooke. Alyssa, just five points for you, a couple of fouls. What are you seeing in this game from your team that are performing so well? Um, I mean, I trust my teammates a lot. I know they can make plays when it counts, so I'm not worried, uh, you know, when I have to sit out for a little bit. I know they got my back. How do you stay in this game? Um, just be smart with my fouls and just keep, my, keep composed. You know, just staying smooth throughout the whole game. All right, thank you. Pace-wise, Utah is controlling the tempo of this game. Fewest points in the first half this season for LSU with 29. We were tied up five times, three lead changes. But now 20 minutes to decide who's moving on to the Elite Eight. You know what's a victory for Utah? Angel Reese only has one offensive rebound. Wow, in a first half. She averages about seven, seven, 6.6 .6 offensive rebounds a game. Yeah, that's her bread and butter. LaDasia Williams had to pick up a lot of the slack when Angel Reese was out, and now she's in double figures with 11. We were talking to Angel about her double doubles, and LaDasia Williams was the first player that, Asia, that Angel gave credit to, said, because of LaDasia Williams, that allows her to have those double doubles. Yeah, both of those players transferred in this season to play for Kim Mulkey at LSU. And Peely is back on the floor, letting you know about it, too, with a bucket. Yeah, look at LSU's offense. Inside the paint, 8 for 12. Outside the paint, 4 for 17. That's who has to get going. Flaje Johnson, the freshman, if she's hitting from the perimeter, make that Utah defense come out. Is he Palmer? Free throw line coming. Alyssa Peely getting position down low, the strength that she has. Woo, a little old school, almost show it to you, then take it back. for Izzy Palmer coming into this game. She had five total points in the NCAA tournament so far, and she's got six today. She's been really good at probing, getting inside the defense, finding if the lane's there, she goes to make the defense rotate. Miladeja Williams is bringing the offense for LSU. 13 points now, six of eight from the field. She was one of the most efficient players when she was at Missouri with her ability to finish inside. She's brought that to Baton Rouge. Played her first season at South Carolina, then three seasons at Missouri, and now at LSU. Tiger ball. Watch the attention that is attracted 
to Angel Reese when she gets it. Four players there. That's why it's important for LaDeja Williams when it comes out to her, she's got to knock that shot down. She's had LSU's last nine points. Angel Reese going up in the triple team. And that pass inside is exactly what Alexis Morris was just talking to her team about. She said, we've got to get the ball inside earlier, and you've got to pass it with some pace. Rajay Johnson getting it inside right there. And Angel knew when she got it, she couldn't catch and wait and you know, let the double team came. She caught it, went right up into the shot quickly. It's going to be a foul against Alexis Morris, her first. Deepkins, her shot was blocked by Angel Reese. Angel Reese got all the way out to the three-point line to block that shot. She gave a little look back. <laughs> That's not new. And a travel on Peely. Her toes didn't come off the ground. She looked at one hand. Oh, did she come all the way off the floor? I don't think so. I don't so. think her left foot did. I like that move. A little show, then bring it back. Did she do it with one hand? I was looking at her feet. No, she palmed it. Yeah. Yeah. That must be cool. That must be cool to be able to do that. LaDasia Williams is LSU's answer right now. 6-0-1. We can show it. seconds for Utah. Jenna Johnson trying to take the baseline. It's around pool just short on the shot. The attention that Angel Reese is attracting. Create opportunities for LaDasia Williams, but you can't force it inside. Utah's defense is going to force that turnover, and then McQueen is fouled. So you watch Angel Reese is right in the middle. You watch how when the ball goes inside, the defense is really taking a step to her. That allows LaDasia Williams just enough time to catch it around that free throw line area and knock it down. Took a second for Flaje Johnson to get up for LSU. She just picked up her second foul. some purple and gold and some sparkles in the stands here in Greenville. It's starting to sound like we're in the PMAC. Yeah. <laughs> the way the attendance has increased so much for LSU and Baton Rouge. Lob pass inside to Johnson. Flange Johnson is the one that got the block of Jenna Johnson. Pass was tipped. Pool runs after it. Neepkins trying to tie it up and she does. Possession arrow to Utah. The officials are letting them play, though. There's a lot of contact happening back and forth on both sides of the ball. Two and a half plus minute scoring drought for Utah. Neepkins coming up off the screen a bit short. And a foul by Alyssa Peely. That will be her third. Angel Reese knows how many fouls. I don't know who was holding who because it was almost like Angel Reese had her arm wrapped around, but then Alyssa, Alyssa wasn't letting go either. I think the official might have seen Alyssa Peely's hip try to go in. 
your hip is went I was over to me right now. I'm gonna call a foul on you, Law. Angel Reese can come from anywhere to get a rebound. She has nine. And Peely is fouled. Nine points, six boards for Angel. Angel Reese has just a radar of where the basketball is going to come off when it comes to getting that offensive rebound and then knows the path of how to take the ball back to the rim. 8-0 run for LSU. Alyssa Peely at the free throw line trying to end that. Katiri Poole just picked up her fourth foul, so she checks out. Last tier, Poa checks in for LSU. You see Angel Reese talking to Flage Johnson. She was even demonstrating, just keep shooting the basketball. The freshman is a little frustrated because Johnson is 0 for 6 from the floor right now. That's something that LSU talked to us about, Angel being that vocal person on the floor. It's not uncommon to see her go up to her teammates and get in their face. Yeah, I love it, you know, and they talked a lot about that. If you got a good teammate, somebody's going to tell you the truth. That's how Angel Reese is. That's how Kim Mulkey coaches. If I'm not doing something right, I want to know about it. you got to be willing to receive it. That is true. LSU has said numerous times this season that honesty between this team has helped them. Pass taken away by Peely. And Nikens traveled. Now Utah knows that LSU is trying to get the ball inside to Angel Reese. The passer has the responsibility of recognizing where the help is going to rotate from. LSU's hit, hit four of its last five shots. With all five players, eyes on Angel Reese. Pull up. Ladeja Williams gets it back. Flage, no. Offensive rebound again. Angel Reese getting her own miss. Just Reese with 11. Just hard to keep number 10 off the glass. She was in foul trouble in the first half. So far in the third, she's been able to go to work doing what she does best, and that's go to the rim. Peely for three. Six three-pointers now for Utah. Alexis Morris. No, LSU just one for 10 from three. Peely got tripped up. Now on the floor, jump ball, possession arrow, LSU. Peely and Reese, they're getting going. We expected the post players for both teams to come show up big in the Sweet 16. Angel Reese getting it done down low, inside. Might be too small? I don't know. You got Alyssa Peely from the perimeter. Hey, I can take you outside and get it done as well. Melissa Peely in Utah in the Sweet 16, their first appearance since 2006. There's been a lot of firsts this season for the Utes. They won their first Pac-12 regular season championship, best home record in school history. Didn't lose a game there. Ranked as high as number three in the AP poll, and all of this has gotten Lynn Roberts as a finalist for the Naismith Coach of the Year. You know, she told us about after that COVID year, they were not very good. And Tara Vanderveer called her and told her to get her stuff together. And so she said that Tara Vander said, I don't want to see another coach at Utah. I want you to be successful there. And Lynn took that to heart. 
And so she went to work putting together the pieces that she needed in order for this program to be successful. Yeah, that's when you mentioned earlier, she really dug into the analytics and those key things that she got out of that. Chances are so important. That's turnovers, rebounds, and of course, shot selection. She said she'll take the shots that are about 17 feet in or the three-point shot, but that long two, that's a no-no. Yeah, the long two being just inside the three-point line. Reese with the rebound. She's one rebound away from her 31st double-double of the season. That would tie an SEC record. Listening in on that last LSU huddle, Gary Reddis, the assistant coach there, actually jumped in and said, hey, we are settling for outside shots. They're coming out to close you out. Blow by them. Looked at Poa, blow by her. And also Alexis Morris. So you see LSU just one of 10 from the three-point line. They want to get at the basket. Utah's making LSU think about it. So when the ball is on the perimeter, they're not completely putting pressure on LSU. But they are making LSU think they're open enough, and that's when players will settle for those jumpers. Kennedy McQueen here, guarded by Flage. Jenna Johnson driving, finds three LSU defenders. Flaje Johnson for LSU number four, the freshman. She is 0 for 7 from the floor. She just needs to see one go down. They fire a pass inside to Angel Reese. That's why you do that. 14 now for Angel. There were three people around Angel Reese. She's used to that by now. But she finds just that little sliver of space to find the opening to score. That's 31 double-doubles on the season for Angel Reese that ties an SEC single season record. Offensive foul on Reese, her third. her third foul, but the last possession with her back to the basket. Three players around her, and she recognized quick enough where the opening was going to be, but Jenna Johnson there is able to rotate over and draw the charge. Palmer with the patience. Palmer keeps probing inside the defense, and if you don't stop her, she's like, I'm going to go score. She's making you make a decision. If you rotate, then you're fine. they're finding their open shooters. That ends a two-and-a-half-minute scoring drop for Utah. Fresh 20. Free throw line, LaDasia Williams, 17 points. She's found a gold mine in that area right around the free throw at that free throw line. That ties her season high. Palmer cooking again, but throws it away. Well, the NCAA Men's Basketball Sweet 16 continues tonight on CBS and TBS. For more information on game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. 10 seconds for the Utes. Palmer! So pure, the net didn't even move. Palmer is keeping the pressure on the defense. You will have to stop her, and then she will find option two. She's option one right now. Utah's hit seven threes. LSU has just hit one. One point game with 10 minutes to go and one of these teams is going to the Elite Eight. Coach, a shift here in the third quarter. LSU really trying to score inside. What becomes critical here in the fourth? I mean, that's no surprise. The Angel Reese getting two fouls. Peely had two fouls in the first half. Uh, Peely picked up her third and they just went at us inside. So 
Uh, foul trouble is obviously a key, but um, it's not so much that, but it's the O boards, the long rebounds. We've got to chase those down. All right, Coach, thank you. Angel Reese, nine points in the third quarter. Well, Utah, Utah's got to figure out how to stop this. They have tried to have four on her. Doesn't matter. Reese can score three. She's found it as well. One on one. Forget about it. Angel Reese is going to score, and you have got to keep her off the offensive glass. Right now, she has turned up, making up for lost time from the first half and gone to work on the glass. Let's check out tonight's player resume. It's brought to you by Indeed and some history for Angel Reese. Her 31st double-double of the season, it ties the most in SEC history, tying a record set by Tierra McCowan. And Angel Reese and done. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and it's not like she's getting just 10 and 10. Like she's getting double figures in 20s, in the 20s when it comes to points, and in the teens when it comes to rebounds. Sometimes the 20s with rebounds as well. Now she had an LSU school record 28 rebounds in a game earlier this season. Healy starting the fourth quarter on the bench. She does have those three fouls, and Utah throws it away. But Peely and Palmer scored all of Utah's points in the third quarter. Well, Palmer, being the point guard, is doing a really jo good job of probing and finding opportunities when she can get inside in the paint, and then when she hit that three, She's going to make LSU's defense think about some things. And she's got 11 points today. That's number one in white for Utah. Now Alexis Morris has been quiet for LSU. Kateri Poole handed it off right into the hands of Ladesha Williams. The passing of Kateri Poole is what Kim Mulkey likes about number 55 in purple. Williams with a new season high, 19 points. Here's Palmer. The kick out to McQueen. LSU ball. Kateri Poole getting inside the defense and just finding as soon as the as Utah commits to the penetration in the middle of the lane, Williams, Poole knew Williams was going to be available. See how Utah's defense backing off. They're protecting the brim. Going to make LSU take those perimeter shots. Yeah, and LSU from the perimeter, from three-point range, one for 10. They've missed their last eight three-point attempts. That's Stacia Young. No. Angel Reese is limping. Deja Williams says, don't worry, I got it. Angel Reese is cramping. Kim Mulkey was almost at half court trying to call a timeout so she can sub out Angel Reese. Be a foul whistled against Flage Johnson, her third. Well, and Flage had to take a foul in order to stop the play because their center was cramping up. They would have been playing four on five. Jenna Johnson. The foul is on Alexis Morris. Her and Jaysha Young both going after the rebound. No, excuse me, it's on Flage. Her fourth. No, it is on, it is on Alexis Morris, her second. That's 
the fourth on Flage Johnson, and Angel Reese is going back to the scorer's table to check in. The training staff was working on Angel Reese, and when I tell you, she literally jumped up off the floor, ready to run back in this game. That's a competitor. Well, she knows she, Angel Reese is the heart and soul of this team. She brings the emotional fire. It's not just what she puts up statistic, statistically. She brings the energy, she brings the juice for this LSU basketball team. Palmer driving, going to the free throw line. This was moments ago when they were looking at Angel Reese. Yeah, waiting for her moment to head over to the scores table. She said, I am ready. Third foul whistled against Alexis Morris as Izzy Palmer goes to the free throw line. One of the officials over at the scores table right now. They're going to ask the teams to go over to their bench areas. So we'll step aside for just a moment. Unless you on top. So here's what we're looking at right now. There's a discrepancy on the number of fouls for Flage Johnson of LSU. They're looking, they went back to the monitor to look. We believe this is the play that would have been her fourth. But they, according to Snap Broadcast, they gave it to Alexis Morris. Right, because if that were four on Flage, Flage Johnson, then this charge on this end would be five, five yes. and Flaze Johnson would be out of the game. So that's what they're taking a look at right now. After review, we have confirmed that number four, Purple, does indeed have five fouls. Thank you. Okay, so Flage Johnson has fouled out of this game. And I just saw Jasmine Carson check in, and also last year, Pua came in. Oh. So Flage Johnson has fouled out Alexis Morris with two fouls now. The freshman was having a, a, a tough night offensively. And she was able to get on the board. She was defending, but she was, uh, Flaje Johnson, 0 for 7 from the floor. So after all of this, Izzy Palmer will still shoot some foul shots. <laughs> yes, yeah, she, she will have two free throws. That's where you're going to miss Flaje Johnson is if LSU gets into the situation where they need to press or they need a three-point shot. Yo, though she struggled tonight, she has been one of their better three-point shooters on the season. 13 points for Palmer. Poet number 13 in purple is the one that's checked in to replace Flaje. And Poole lost to Alyssa Peely. And Somebody's Angel missing a shoe. Reese, Angel Reese's shoe. Feels familiar. And she won't be able to block the shot with the shoe in her hand today. It's at the other end. That was a viral clip during the regular season. Peely working to create space underneath. And they're going to stop time here and grab the shoe. It was right in the middle of the playing service surface. Alyssa Peely does a nice job of 
using her body. She recognizes she's in underneath the basket, so uses a reverse layup. 14 points for Alyssa Peely, four rebounds. Jenna Johnson is working on Angel Reese. And Johnson whistled, whistled for her first foul. We have had nine lead changes in this game. Both teams' largest leads have been seven points. Again, two of the top five scoring teams in the country had reached 60 points yet today. Winner is going to get Miami in the Elite Eight. Six seconds. Morris to pull up. Neepkins fighting for it, and Ladeja Williams fouls her. Her third. Neepkins going to the free throw line. Drops in the first. The NCAA Women's Championship continues today with the Sweet 16. Runs through Sunday, April 2nd, when we crown a champion every game on the ESPN family of networks. For more information, you can go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Don't forget, coming up after us, you get to see Caitlin Clark in Iowa. Taking on Colorado, we get the Sweet 16 all day here on ESPN. Kateri Poole, the second three-pointer today for LSU. They're two for 11. It's going to be interesting down the stretch because at Utah, they've only committed one foul. So Utah can stay aggressive, attacking the basket, creating opportunities to get to the free throw line. There was offensive foul whistled against Utah. Now LSU can get a little animated. Kateri Poole got in the face of the official wanting the foul called after the three, and she got a warning. That last foul was whistled against Kennedy McQueen, her second. Three points for LaDasia Williams. She had to pick up a lot of the slack for LSU when Angel Reese was on the bench in foul trouble. Neepkins rolled in and then popped right out. It's been the Neepkins Williams show. Now Reese getting involved. Blocking foul on Kennedy McQueen, her third. Under five to go, LSU up 55-52. Stars are out in the Sweet 16. After this game wraps up, it'll be about 30 minutes before we get to see Iowa and Caitlin Clark battle Colorado. Caitlin Clark in the NCAA tournament. Averaging 24 and 12. Cruising. Guards getting it done. She's always getting it done. And she's changed up. She's not just logo three, Caitlin Clark. She's also attacking, getting downhill this season. Angel Reese gets both of them. It's a 7 0 run for LSU.
six seconds. Tipped away by Poole. Blocked by Peely. Solid defense by LSU for about 25 seconds. Gets the steal and then thinks they've got an easy one the other direction. Peely said, not so fast. They'll fire it into Angel Reese, who immediately is double teamed. She falls down. Alexis Morris, this is about her time. She starts to get turned up. Alexis Morris in the NCAA tournament. Alexis Morris, she started at Baylor with Kim Mulkey, came back to LSU to play for Mulkey. There's nothing more than she wants to do than continue playing in her career. That's the fifth foul on Kateri Poole. So now Poole and Flage Johnson have both fouled out for LSU. So it's gonna be important now Jasmine Carson is going to have to come in and give LSU three good minutes. Neepkins is going to be at the free throw line for Utah. They haven't scored in two and a half minutes. What's got to change here for the Utes? Well, Palmer was making things happen before as she was doing a lot of the ball handling and looking for opportunities on drive. So she was either getting layups or if they were going behind screens on her, she was able to knock down the three. She needs to, Izzy Palmer needs to initiate the offense for Utah. She is one of three players for Utah in double figures today with 13. Neepkins is also there with 11. She's got 13 now. Now LSU doesn't have to be in a hurry. We going to use as much clock as possible, but how long will Utah sit back and let them let LSU use full clock? The Deja Williams is fouled. Already has a season high 23 points, two away from tying her career high. And that's the fourth foul on Peely. Well, Adesha Williams in this second half, she's a perfect seven for seven from the floor. the first. She's coming off a double-double against Michigan. First two rounds of this tournament, 19 points, 23 tonight. <laughs> Just going up. The more at stake, the better she's playing. She's a veteran player. Three minutes to go. Winner gets Miami in the Elite Eight on Sunday. Deep kids, yes! And Lynn Roberts calls timeout. 16 for Neepkin. She's hit three three-pointers. It's a big bucket for Utah. 
But we were just talking about Ladeja Williams, and let's take a look at tonight's Capital One rewarding performance. We're giving it to the new season high for Ladeja. She has 24 points, and with all the attention that was being paid to Angel Reese, and with Angel Reese at times in foul trouble, it was Ladeja Williams that stepped up big for LSU. And really, it was like finding a pot of gold at that free throw line area. That jumper was pure up top. And when the defense adjusted, Ladeja put it on the deck and attacked the rim. She's been huge for the LSU Tigers. Second half, seven of seven from the field for Ladeja Williams. One point from tying her career high. But that was an important bucket for Utah that Nipkins just knocked down. Well, Nipkins can be that go-to player, and she is one that wants the basketball in big moments. She was the Pac-12 Freshman of the Year last season. Missed by Poa. Here's Nipkins. Doesn't have any help. Got a good look at it, got her own rebound. She was all alone, there were three purple jerseys around her and got her own rebound. She scored Utah's last eight points. Leapkin's trying to add to it. Blocking foul on Poa. Neekins is that player for Utah that can take over. She's got a confidence about her, a toughness about her. And really creating offense off the defense. She's a fierce competitor. Neekins coming from Minnesota. Over 3,700 points in high school. That's the fourth most in Minnesota state history. She scored 67 points in a state tournament game once. When you need offensive production. There you go. You go to Neekins. 67 points? And that's not going to her. She's going to get it. Tied up for the 10th time. 7-0 run for the Utes. LSU does not have Flaugé Johnson or Katiri Poole. They have both fouled out. Jasmine Carson waiting in the corner. Reese offensive board. Driving and she's fouled, and Angel Reese limping. Fourth foul called on Angel Reese. Angel Reese trying to get to the glass. So she got the first one, but you see the Utes were very intentional of making sure Angel Reese wasn't going to get a second offensive rebound. Palmer gets the first. You see they've wrapped her leg up, got some blood on there. Big day for Izzy Palmer. She's been so important for Utah. 9-0 run now for the Utes. And LSU going with a big lineup. So you've got Samaya Smith, Ladeja Williams, and Angel Reese on the floor at the same time. And remember, Peely's out there with four fouls for Utah. So now that means Meekins is going to be guarding Smith. We're going to call Johnson on that foul against Reese. Yeah, her second. Both teams in the bonus, so a foul by either is going to send the opponent to the free throw line for two shots for the rest of this game. 
That is a two-minute scoring drought for the Tigers. Both these teams trying to get to the Elite Eight. Utah hasn't been there since 2006. LSU hasn't been to the Elite Eight since 2008. Healy can't finish. LSU has not had a field goal in three minutes. Well, they got two of their better offensive players on the bench. Flage Johnson has fouled out, and as well as Katiri Poole. So Kim Mulkey calls timeout. 18 seconds on the shot clock, 27.5 seconds left in this game. Now, the first thing that LSU's got to do is to get the ball in, and then they've got to go a two-man game, and it has to be with Alexis Morris and Angel Reese. Alexis Morris can make a play off the bounce. She can attack. If they don't, if they don't, if they double off her, then I think Kim Mulkey is going to trust Alexis Morris to be able to make that drop pass and get the ball to Angel Reese, and then have Ladeja Williams crash the glass. Samaya Smith as well. That's why she's got the size inside. And then she's got to recognize it when they score it. Now, they've got to protect the basketball too. Ladeja Williams, she shoots less than 50% from the free throw line. So you got to believe that Utah, if Ladeja Williams gets the basketball, they're going to try to send her to the free throw line. Utah with a one point lead, two timeouts for LSU, three for Utah. Miami survived the comeback from Villanova to move on to their first Elite Eight in program history, and now they await their opponent, either Utah or LSU, and right now it's the Utes with a one-point lead. Look for Alexis Morris and Angel Reese in a two-man game. It'll be Jasmine Carson to inbound for LSU. Morris is at the top of your screen. Reese working down on the block. She is covered up. Breaks free. And then immediately double teamed. And Angel Reese calls timeout. LSU will have one timeout left. But five seconds on the shot clock. Well, now with five seconds on the shot clock, can look to, uh, again, I, I think you've got to put the ball in the hands of Alexis Morris, the connection that Morris and Reese have, and you can get a drive to the basket, or you can get Reese slipping to the basket and getting the easy two. You just need to win by one. You don't need a home run play. So I think give the ball for those two. On that last position, Alexis Morris was opposite Angel Reese. The ball goes inside, Therese just trying on the pass. Four people are gonna connect, gonna collapse on her. Run a ball screen action. You've got enough time. Make the officials make the call. So LSU will inbound underneath their own basket. Five seconds on the shot clock. Now this could be a pick the picker and get a quick jumper from Morris. They get it into Reese. Underneath the basket, can't finish. Too far under the rim. Alexis Morris got it back. And Morris was fouled. Well, Morris didn't give up on the play. When Angel Reese, Reese misses, instead of retreating, Morris attacks the rim and gets herself to the free throw line. That is the fifth foul on Alyssa Peely. 14 points for her, five rebounds. 10 seconds to go in this game, and Alexis Morris is at the free throw line. A 78% free throw shooter. Now Utah still has three timeouts. top and 
Utah will immediately call timeout. They advance the ball. It will be inbounded on the near side. Alexis Morris, the veteran point guard, knocking down two pressure free throws. That's huge. That's who you want at the line in a situation like this. Your most veteran player that's cool, calm, and collected. Now for Utah. Look, they only need two, but it has been Gianna Nipkins that has been huge down the stretch, making big plays. She has hit three threes. So with Palmer with the basketball now, having the opportunity, she's been so good at creating her shot and getting to the rim. Again, you only need to win by one. So if she can create in, she can go in, create her own basket, get the defense to collapse, and then she's one of the best passers Utah has. Neepkins with 20, Palmer with 15. It will be Neepkins to inbound, 10 seconds on the clock. Utah does have two timeouts. And they're in the bonus, so uh, just to look to attack. Into Johnson, right back to Neepkins. LaDasia Williams with the block. Johnson's shot is blocked, no, a foul is whistled. It's on Angel Reese. That's her fifth. And it puts Utah at the free throw line. So LaDasia Williams, she has the first block. From that angle, she did. She caught her on the wrist. Seventeen points, twelve rebounds for Angel. But more pressure free throws for Jenna Johnson. Wow, she's a seventy-five percent free throw shooter. Now she can tie it. He was across half court. Missed them both. LSU calls a timeout. 2.9 on the clock. So now, did the, did the clock stop? They're looking at the clock right now. Before the last free throw, Kim Mulkey had made the signal, call timeout immediately. And then LaDasia Williams was calling timeout underneath the basket. So Utah's going to have to foul immediately? Absolutely they are. But LSU can advance the basketball. It'll be down in front of LSU's bench. LSU was down by a point. Alexis Morris went to the free throw line and hit two free throws to put them up by one. Jenna Johnson got a look for Utah on the other end. She was fouled and missed both free throws, and our score stays the same, 64-63. 2.9 left in this game. But now, Utah, if they're going to foul, they want to foul. LaDasia Williams, she shoots 49%. Samaya Smith, she shoots 58. You go in for the steal all out if you're Utah. But if you don't get the basketball, you've got to make sure that you're fouling and not allowing time the to go off the clock. The game clock has been adjusted to 2.0. In that previous play, the game clock froze for 0.9 seconds. So there's your explanation. Now two seconds on the clock.
LSU does not have any timeouts. They have to get this in. And Utah is whistled for the foul before the ball is inbounded. It's on Vieta. Still, Utah has two timeouts. Alexis Morris back at the free throw line. This has, <laughs> this has been a ball game. One of the first two games of the Sweet 16. Huge free throws by Alexis Morris. Utah calls timeout. They can advance it. Two seconds left. Got to have a three. Gianna Neepkins can shoot the three. So you have got to make sure if you are, if you're LSU, gosh, with two seconds, I'd foul. You, yeah. Just foul. Not on a three-point shot, obviously. Yes. But. Yeah. And send. Utah to the free throw line. You know, I, I, I struggle with that. I go back and forth. But in this situation, with two seconds left, with the three-point shooters that Utah has, I'm not going to run the risk of them hitting a three and losing the game. I'm going to put you at the free throw line, only give up two. I still got one extra point. Don't forget Iowa, Colorado. They're coming up as soon as we finish this game here on ESPN. It has been an absolute battle between these two teams who came in pretty evenly matched. Absolutely. It's been a battle inside. Teams have struggled with some foul trouble, but I think it's how tough these two teams have played each other. I mean, you go back and look at the score 66-63. These two teams average over 80 points a game. So not only are they good offensive teams, these are two tough defensive teams as well. Deisha Young will inbound for Utah. Two seconds. Here comes Neepkins trying to come get it. And Utah's going to have to call timeout. Their final one. Still kind of risky, though, of allowing them to Running offense, running off screens, I, I would I would foul. I still have <laughs> two seconds left to go. Put him at the free throw line because of the dangerous threat that Utah has of their ability to shoot the three. I mean, the worst thing that can happen, yes, if they hit the three, you go to overtime. But if the shooting the free throw. Utah has hit eight three-pointers today, 38% from three-point range. I'll try again, again. Neepkins, number five. They were looking for her the first time. Young puts the shot up. LSU is elite once again. The time